Hello viewers, this is Dr. Fatima welcoming you to the session on data structures. In this video, we will see about Q data structure where Q ADT, array implementation and linked list implementation of Q is discussed. Let us see what is Q. Q is a linear data structure which stores data in such a way that the first element inserted is the first one to be deleted. Hence, it is also called as FIFO list. In Q, insertion can be done at one end called the rear. And similarly, deletion can be done at one end called the front. Let us see an example. This is how the Q looks like with elements 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. With the front pointer pointing to the beginning of the queue and the rear pointer pointing to the end of the queue. The real world example for queue are ticket counter line in theater, railway station, bank, etc. In the queue, the first person entered is the first person to be served and he leaves the queue. Next, let us see the queue ADT. The structure of the queue is a collection of elements with the FIFO property. The operation that can be performed in the queue are NQ operation which insert an element at the rear end of the queue. The DQ operation which deletes and returns an element at the front end of the queue. Is empty. This function tests for emptiness of the queue. Next let us see the implementation of queue. Q can be implemented either as an array based or linked list based implementation. Let us see the in detail the array implementation of the Q. As you know an array is a static data structure so the collection of data must be fixed in size and the array size must be specified initially. In array implementation the structure of the Q is defined as struct Q in Q of max size in front comma rear. Here the Q is declared as an array with max size and associated with it the variable front and rear which is pointing the beginning and the end of the Q respectively. The Q can be represented in alternate way without structure also like in Q of max size in front comma front and rear. But here front and the rear are just variable not associated to the queue. The programmer should carefully associate these pointer to the queue. So this alternate way can be used when we write simple programs with 1D 1Q. Next let us see the queue operations. Is empty. This function checks whether the queue is empty or not. As Q is declared as an array, we can store the elements in the queue starting at index 0. So, we can set the index as minus 1 to indicate the queue is empty. Hence, the function returns true when the queue is empty, else it returns false. The queue empty condition is also called as the underflow condition. The next operation which we see is is full. This function checks whether the queue is full or not. In array implementation, as we start at the index 0, the queue full condition is reached when the index reaches the max, minor, max size minus 1. As rear is pointing to the end of the queue, the rear is equal to max size minus 1 indicates the queue is full. So this function returns true if the queue is full else it returns false. The queue full condition is also called as an overflow condition. Next, we will discuss the two important operations in the queue that is NQ and the DQ operations. NQ function is used to insert the element at the rear end of the queue. The NQ function invokes the isFull function to check whether the queue is full or not. Because the elements can be inserted only when the queue is not full. So when we insert an element, uh, there are two possibilities. 
the cube may be empty and what we insert is the first element or the cube may contain some elements. So to insert the first element in the cube, set front is equal to rear is equal to 0 and insert the data in the queue of rear. To insert the other elements in the queue, increment the rear index and insert the data in the queue of rear. Let us see the example how the elements 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 are inserted in the queue and here the max size is assumed to be 5. Initially, as the queue is empty, the front index and the rear index is minus 1. We insert the first element that is 10 here, set rear is equal to front is equal to 0. And the insert 10 at the index 0. To insert 20, the rear index is incremented by 1. By which the rear gets the value 1 and 20 is inserted at the index 1. Similarly, the elements 30, 40 and 50 are inserted in the queue at index 2, 3, 4 respectively by incrementing their rear index each time. When all the elements are inserted, their rear will be at index 4. Here, as the max size is assumed to be 5, the rear is equal to max size minus 1 indicates the queue full and no further insertion is possible. So, thus the insertion is completed. Next, let us see the DQ operation. DQ function is used to delete an element from the front end of the queue. The DQ function invokes the isEmpty function to check whether the queue is empty or not because deletion cannot be performed if the queue is empty. Recall the FIFO property of Q, that is, the first inserted element is the first one to be removed. Hence, to delete the retrieve and return the element from the front end of the queue. Then, increment the front index by 1. If the queue is empty, then the message Q empty is printed and the value minus 1 is returned. Let us see the example how the elements in the queue are DQ. Consider the queue with the elements 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Observe the queue. The front points to the beginning of the queue and rear points to the end of the queue. As a deletion in the queue can happen only in the front end, the element pointed by the front is deleted and returned. And the front index, once deleted, the front index is incremented by 1. So now the element 10 is deleted and the front index is incremented by 1. Similarly, the elements 20, 30, 40, 50 at the index 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively are dequeued and each time the front index is incremented by 1. When all the elements in the queue are dequeued, the front index reaches the index greater than rear, which is used to indicate the queue is empty. Note that the, here the logical deletion is done. Thus, the deletion is completed. Next, let us see the linked list implementation of queue. Recall that the linked list is a dynamic data structure, so the collection of elements can be used which are variable in size and structure. The advantage of using linked list is that we need not worry about the size of the queue. The queue is a collection of nodes and the nodes in the queue are dynamically created when required. So, there won't be queue full condition in linked list implementation. Moreover, if the elements are no longer needed, then those nodes can be freed from the queue. The structure of the linked queue is defined as struct queue with the data and the next field of type struct queue. We have two pointers front and rear which is used to point the front and the rear end of the queue. So it is declared to be of type struct queue. Next let us see the NQ operation. To insert an element in the linked queue, create a new node YAN. 
and allocate memory. Set the data with the element to be inserted and the next field as null. Once the new node is created, check whether the queue is empty. If so, the element to be inserted is the first element of the queue. Hence, set front is equal to rear is equal to new node n. If Q is not empty, then set the next field of the rear to point to n and set n as the new rear. Next, let us see the example how the elements 10, 20, 30 and 40 are inserted in the queue. As it is linked list, initially there is no node, hence rear and front is set as null. So, to insert the element 10, create a new node n and set its data and the next field as null. Let us assume this new node is created at the location 1768. As the queue is empty, the new node with the value 10 is the first element to be inserted in the queue. Make the rear and the front pointer to point to n. The next element to be inserted is 20. As usual, create a new node n. Set its data as 20 and the next field as null. Let us assume this new node is created at the location 2048. Now, make the next field of rear to point to this new node n. Observe the queue where the next field of the node pointed by rear is replaced with address 2048 which is the address of the new node n. Make this new node n as the new rear. Thus, the insertion of 20 is completed. Following the same procedure, the element 30, 40 are inserted at the rear end of the queue by creating a new node n and linking it to the rear end of the queue and setting the new rear. Observe how the insertion happens. Thus, all the elements in the queue are inserted. Let us see the DQ operation. As we have seen, the DQ function is used to delete an element from the front end of the queue. Before uh, performing DQ operation, the queue is checked for empty, that is the underflow condition. Because the queue cannot be, DQ cannot be performed if the queue is empty. Go through the code. Initially, Q is checked for empty by checking whether front is equal to null. If so, then return minus 1. Else, proceed with the deletion. To delete an element, set temp pointer to point to front and retrieve the data pointed by front. Now, make front pointer to point to the node next to the current front by setting front is equal to front dot next. To delete the node physically, free use free statement. That's why a pointer temp is made to point to front. Now we use free of temp to delete the node physically and return the retrieved data. This is how DQ is performed. Next let us see the example how the elements in the queue are deleted using the DQ operation. Observe the queue with the elements and the rear pointing to the end of the queue and the front pointing to the beginning of the queue. As per FIFO principle, the first element deleted is 10, pointed by the front. To delete 10, set 10 pointer to point to the front. Retrieve the data pointed by front, hence the element 10 is DQ. And make the front to point to the node next to the current front. To delete the node with the element 10 physically, use free of temp. Thus, the deletion is completed. Following the same procedure, the element 10, 20, 30, 40 are dequeued from the queue. Each time, the temp pointer is used to point to the front end of the queue and retrieve the element from the front and move the front pointer to the next node. When all the elements are deleted, the front and the rear becomes null. This is how DQ operation is performed. 
I hope this video was informative. Let us see the types of you in my next video. Have a happy learning. Bye-bye.